Uh, speaking of great, what's more impressive to you, Caitlin Clark, what she did in her career, or LeBron getting to forty thousand points? Wow, uh, I don't, I don't. That's a difficult comparison. Uh, they're both amazing, and that that kind of brings up an interesting point: is almost our need to go away from celebrating the accomplishment and then you know, try to put it in a different context. Like when Ti- when Tiger Woods wins the Masters, we don't say who's better, Tiger or Jack, you know, when he's getting the green jacket put on him. Uh, but we seem to do that for some reason now. Um, I, I don't know what the greater accomplishment was. All, all I know, Dan, is Caitlin Clark is a supernova, the likes of which we've never seen, uh, in certainly in women's basketball and arguably in in college basketball, period. And it, it it has been amazing to see her fill all these arenas uh, and to play the way she plays, to play with that kind of joy, which I think is an additive to, to just her scoring. And then one thing that gets overlooked a, a little bit, maybe not by some of the basketball experts that cover games, but she's an extraordinary passer. Uh, there's no other scorer that I know of. Uh, on on that list of the greatest scorers in in women's basketball and even men's that is as high up on the assist level as she is. I mean, she's a magnificent passer in addition to being an unbelievable scorer. Yeah, and I wonder if it translates to the WNBA. Like, is this a moment or is this a movement where maybe the WNBA starts to get more recognition? Um and, and that's not fair to say to her, hey, you got to be the person who's going to lift up the WNBA after you did this for college basketball. But I, I wonder, how does the WNBA benefit from this, aside from, you know, Caitlin playing in Indiana? I think the WNBA will benefit from having all those eyeballs going toward her and then the eyeballs catching how much great play there is aside from her. I mean, it's a spotlight that'll illuminate a lot more than just her. So there's nothing but pluses there. Um, You know, we had an interesting conversation about Caitlin Clark a few weeks ago on College Game Day where uh, there was a the point made. Can you really call her great if she hasn't won a championship yet, even though even though I was in the championship game last year against LSU? And it sort of brought up the idea of it is a fair discussion. uh, Who's the greatest? women's player of all time, just like it is who's the greatest. Like Maravich was the all-time leading scorer, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't say he was the greatest player ever in, in men's college basketball. So those are good discussions, but we don't, you know, it's like the nuance gets lost in, in the accomplishment. Like her accomplishment is fact. Like there's no debate. She's the greatest scorer in Division One history. Now there is a discussion about, you know, whether these records – you know, there's a woman named Pearl Moore who scored over 4,000 points before the NCAA was started for women's women's basketball. You know, she played at Francis Mary in South Carolina, played for Sylvia Hatchell, who, who later became the head coach at North Carolina. And why doesn't the NCAA, re, uh, you know, recognize those records, recognize Lynette Woodard's records? Lynette Woodard played at Kansas. Yeah. You know, it's not like she played at some tiny little college that didn't play against anybody. Um, so those are those are other sort of nuanced discussions that we seem incapable of having while while the record was just broken. OK, so how do you quantify her career? Jay Williams, you know, your uh, teammate on college game day, he's the one that said can't call a great shed and won titles. So, yeah, I, I, and I differed with it at the time. I, I think great and greatest are two different discussions. Um, and, and I think it is a fair discussion to say, was, was Diana Taurasi the better player or was uh, Cheryl Miller the better player? We, we can have those discussions, but nothing gets accomplished there because those are, those are fun barroom discussions. Just like, you know, we can sit and talk about the greatest golfer and we're going to argue over Tiger Woods and Jack Nicholas, uh, Jack Nicholas, And somebody's going to say, hey, 18 versus 15, end of discussion. And it's a little more nuanced than that, too. But at the end of that discussion, what's really accomplished? Because, you know, Pete Maravich, you could say, well, wait a minute. Pete Maravich only played three years. Um, He didn't have a three-point shot. Uh, He did play in a segregated SEC where there were only white guys playing. But at the same time, he averaged 44 points a game for his career. So when we argue about greatest scorer, you know, that's a nuanced part of the discussion. 
Uh, but you know, you, you ultimately circle back to one thing there's no discussion about is Caitlin Clark of Iowa has scored more points than anyone that has played Division I college basketball. That's a fact. I love that we're even getting into these kind of conversations because, you know, when Kelsey Plum was doing what she was doing, we weren't saying, yeah, well, but she's not Pete Maravich. Now, when you have a nickname of, you know, Ponytail Pete or, you know, uh, what her nickname was in high school, now she surpasses him on the all-time scoring record. But I could look at Brianna Stewart as the greatest women's college basketball player of all time. Like four years, four titles, and MVP in those four. I mean, you can't do any better than that. That's right. And, you know, you could bring up uh, Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and it does not, when we're discussing the best player, the best player ever in the NBA, for some reason, he's not brought up as early as, as a person like me thinks he should be. But again, those are just subjective barroom discussions that are, are, are media discussions that are great. They're fun. But Caitlin Clark's uh, presence and what she has done to elevate the game, uh, it, to your point about Kelsey Plum, we didn't pay as much attention to Kelsey Plum's records. And we're paying more attention now because of how she and others, it's not just her, but she's been the lead dog in this, ha has elevated, elevated the college game. 